Well, thank you for being uh, with us today and wanted to be part of our series, leadership series, Appetizers for Success. So Tom has been a friend of the uh, Appetizers family um, and Very he has much. contributed tremendously to our knowledge of how to further develop our leads. And he's worked for Linked Selling. Yep. And we are going to talk today, uh, Tom, if you wish, about, you know, what are, what are you seeing in the in B2B businesses? Uh, what are the investing that people are doing to increase their sales efforts? Yeah, uh, an excellent topic because we specialize in B2B. And <clears throat> also, real quick, Thanks a ton for having me, Marilyn. I'm very honored to be here. Um, you know, with the new landscape, um, you know, there hasn't been a big shift in what companies have been investing more in. Really, at the end of the day, companies really need a reliable process that's going to allow them to generate a higher quality lead, right? Um, the companies who are not investing very smart right now are doing things as, creating sales brochures, uh, minor tweaks to their website, maybe uh, printing cards, uh, which is all great. It's all great to do and, and great resources to have, but essentially those things are not going to push the needle in lead generation and sales. And the key to really creating a high growth sales organization is by having a process and system that implements a multi-touch point strategy. Right, so what we're seeing B2B companies really invest in is a multi-channel approach on how they can implement a multi-touch point strategy. And what that means is they're looking at the multi-channel part is what are all the outbound platforms out there that we can utilize? Like LinkedIn, outreach, email sequences, call teams, paid ad funnels uh, even. Uh, they're really, they're investing in that approach with that multi-touch point strategy because now it's about building that relationship and communicating with your prospect everywhere they turn. So that's what we see a lot of B2B companies investing in right now. Thank you for your, sharing your experience. Now, you know, we're, some of us are small entrepreneurs, some are medium-sized companies that we don't have a large group of salespeople doing this multi-touching that you're saying they'll be ideal. So what are some of the ways that you have seen uh, prosper the most for, let's say, small and medium-sized businesses without, you know, having to hire a whole bunch of people to do this for them? Yeah. Um, again, when we talk about platforms and strategy, it always comes back to what is the objective you're looking to achieve? Because sometimes for the small business owner, it's not always about generating phone calls, but maybe about opt-ins for a webinar or something. So that strategy is going to be a little different versus a strategy that's going to generate that direct phone call. So let's focus on a strategy that's going to uh, generate that direct phone call, right? That's going to be looking at creating processes in a multi-touch point campaign through LinkedIn. Outreach is a great platform for small business owners in the B2B space. And then also email sequences. That's another uh, tactic that a lot of small business owners, I don't want to say overlook, but underutilize just because they're not familiar with all the type of sequences and tactics they are able to use with the email. And generally, they're used to having one form of tactic in lead gen, right? It's usually word of mouth or referrals or maybe networking events. Um, but the strategies I would recommend are going to go back to creating a process that allows you to implement this multi-touch point strategy, whether you're a small business owner and just focused on LinkedIn and email, or let's say you're a Fortune 500 company and you need more tactics. The concept and the recommendation is always going to be the same of this multi-touch point approach, just your platforms are going to differ. Right. And of course, I always want to clarify that once you identify someone as an ideal prospect, it is so important to have that process in place that allows you to implement this multi touch point strategy. And also with the multi touch point strategy, we can't just be sending hard pitches and asking for the phone call and call to actions all the time. You need to have the right mixture of call to action messages, but also 
value-based messages, right? Messages that are designed to add value to the prospect, to reinforce your positioning as that industry expert, but also as that thought leader and resource, that strengthens that, what we all know, the like, know, and trust, which is so key in sales. It's that process and that approach that allows business owners to use a platform like LinkedIn or email tactics with that multi-touch point approach to generate the best, the higher quality opportunities for themselves. I think you touched on something that um, it, it takes a lot of people time to learn what their ideal audience is. Who is my prospect? Because, you know, God knows, and I've seen this, you know, unfortunately, Link, it's people, it's not about the platform. Um, you know, people sometimes don't use it correctly. And you get this request, right? That, okay, well, do you want to be my friend kind of thing, right? Do you want to join my network? And then you read the description, it has nothing to do, or at least you think it's nothing to do with your business, or why is this person contacting me? And the worst are the ones that I said, well, I can give you all this you know, multiple leads and, you know, you will conquer the world, you know, with me, come and, you know, I receive at least five of those, um, you know, and it's not, again, it's not a platform, it's how people are using the platform. So can you give us an example of, you know, a nugget, I say a wisdom on how to more effectively use um, LinkedIn and, you know, the platform and the contacts, you know, how would somebody go starting that multi-channel you know, what is appropriate, right? You know, how do you warm up your uh, prospects? You no, know, very good question. And um, I can give you two components to building that overall machine. And we'll start with LinkedIn on the proper approach. Because like you said, there are just way too many people, in my opinion, who have a misconception that LinkedIn is a sales platform. Right? And it's not. And that's why we see so many people who, not just after connecting, but sometimes now in that actual connection request, they're giving you a sales pitch, a hard pitch, right? And, and that's not what the platform is designed for. So when we talk about the right, the proper approach to using LinkedIn as an actual lead generation tool, there are four pillars essentially that we wanna follow, right? Um, the acronym is what we call LEAD, and it breaks down into leadership, elevate, authority, or I'm sorry, attract, and then development of relationships, all right? And let's look at each one. The leadership is what you just alluded to a little bit ago about having that exact defined clarity on who exactly it is that you help, what is your unique or proprietary process on helping them, and then what is the value and the benefits in the eyes of the prospects. When you have that clarity, that's going to be able, or I'm sorry, going to allow you to use those LinkedIn search filters to identify what you consider your ideal prospect. We also call that your prospect profile. Mm -hmm. right, once you have that clarity, again, that's in the leadership uh, pillar, that's when you move to elevate, right? Elevate's also going to include a component of authority. So the elevate pillar or component is going to be uh, taking your LinkedIn profile, and then doing uh, what we call a profile opt or optimization, pardon me, where you're creating your profile in copyright and language that's going to attract, entice, and draw your prospects to not only want to connect with you, but if they have an immediate need, we also want them to reach out to you, right? And that's an inbound result, which is great. But the process we're going through, Marilena, is very much an outbound approach, meaning that when I get to letter D, I'll explain more. So the profile optimization is all about attracting and speaking to that, that prospect. The other component of Elevate is a content strategy and an authority leadership platform, what we also call a LinkedIn group. And when we talk about the content strategy and where that fits into the process, the content strategy in your LinkedIn group is always there for positioning and not for prospecting, meaning it's there to reinforce and to position you, again, as that thought leader, but also as that industry expert, right? We're not going to be asking for phone calls through that content strategy. It's about reinforcing that positioning and having you seen as that resource to your community. Same with the, your LinkedIn group. All right, so that takes care of the elevate slash authority. 
then you have attract. This is the big one. Now that you have that clarity of your prospect profile, now that you have your optimized profile, your content strategy, and your group, now it's time to use those defining variables to research and find your ideal prospects and then send out that personalized connection request to get them into your network. That's, that's letter A, the third pillar of track. Once they're in your network, then the fun begins because we move to letter D and that's the development of relationships. And this is where that multi-touch point sequence is going to come in. Whether it's LinkedIn, email, phone calls, paid ad funnels, combination of all the platforms, we can find thousands of studies that talk about it will take five, 10, 15, 20, 25 touch points sometimes to go from prospect to lead to new client. And that number is always going to vary. But what we do know for sure is that it's never going to be one or two. That is why you need to have this multi touch point sequence that sprinkles in those touch points that are value added, relationship building touch points along with those call to action messages. So that's that one component we talked about. Now, let's say you have a group of prospects that work through that messaging funnel and they don't respond. They don't say yes to a phone call. They don't say, you know, leave me alone or stop messaging or reach back later. Well, when we, when we have a prospect enter our messaging funnel, whether they come from LinkedIn or email or paid ad funnels, whatever it is, is when they enter our funnel, there's only one of two distinct ways they will ever leave that messaging funnel. One, they become a client, or two, they opt out of, the, uh, out of all of the messaging, right? Other than that, we're gonna have processes and systems set up to constantly reach out to those prospects. So after LinkedIn messaging, if someone doesn't respond, we're going to transition those prospects into an email sequence, a LinkedIn email follow-up sequence. And one step further, anyone who does not respond to that, we drop them into what we call the long game, a long-term nurture drip campaign that's designed to add value, keep you top of mind. So when that prospect situation changes, they're not doing Google searches, they're not researching on who to look uh, or who to reach out to. They know who to reach out to, it's you. So though that's the, the, the two components that people can take from this series or this interview and implement right now. Yeah. No, I thank you and for reminding me of the process that I already learned. And, and yes, you know, one of the things that was very striking to me, even though, you know, I might have an MBA and whatever else studies uh, our audience might have out there, is the reminder that, you know, there's a part of this that is the human touch. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of platform uh, we choose to use to consolidate uh, our funnels and, and, and you know, we, you have to keep at, uh, expanding your expertise to other people that might need you, that might discover you. The beauty of this is to be discovered, you know, yes. and, and, and to have a network of people that can talk highly of you. I remember in one of our uh, sessions uh, that uh, I was very resistant on the fact that, well, are really people going to pick up the phone when I tell them I want 15 minutes with you? And you prove, you know, you prove me wrong. I remember I was very, very resistant. Like, nobody's going to call me. You know, I mean, they do have the time because right now we're having crisis. Everybody has time on their hands. Yeah, sure. But, you know, the beauty of that is I have get, you know, to know a lot of people in my network now. They're just not just a number. Like, I don't have all these followers or connections, as you call it, in LinkedIn. It's more than that. It's people that know me, that know about what, you know, we can offer, you know, uh, as consultants and, and coaches. And so on for every single person that is on LinkedIn. You know, even, you know, I'm coaching some people right now that are looking for jobs and I'm just telling them how important it is for them to be discovered, you know, for them to be known, Very much. for them to work on the profile and be unique because we all have something to offer one another, either business or individuals. And, and part of what you're talking about is how do I cultivate uh, with a multi-channel you know, all different touch points on, on people that might be interested in what my offering is. And so it's just so important. And businesses, small or large, will have to do that constantly. And, and in my view, the more focused that you are on the prospects that will buy from you, that's where you want to be. You don't want to be, oh, this person, want to reach out a million people. Well, not exactly. in my case, but, you know, it's very difficult to, to maintain that. So focus on the ones that you have more prospects of converting 
into a solid lead and they can buy the products from you. 100%. Uh, I, say, I say it a lot, actually, of when you try to speak to everyone, you end up talking to no one. Define your niche, stick with your niche, and be the specialist, your industry expert in your niche. But bumps, I'm and, sure. and also to mention, uh, um, I remember you being a little, I don't want to say defiant, but a little, giving a little pushback on the process because, again, it was, I, I wouldn't, I don't respond to what I see on LinkedIn. And again, when we dove into what you were seeing and your experience with LinkedIn, was everything that you should not do on LinkedIn, receiving those hard pitches and just one after another. People sharing content that was just either directing you to a lead magnet, a sales page, or something just about them, right? It's when you shifted the focus where it's not about me. And I tell everyone, I'm sorry it's, if it's a hard truth the first time hearing it, but it's never about us. It's about our prospects. It's not even about our solutions. It's always about the prospects. And when you put the prospect, their interest, that relationship first and add value to it, that comes through and that prospect feels that. And when we talk about also you know, building rapport, that doesn't just happen in a sales process when you get on the phone with them. It happens in the messaging process as well. And a big thing that uh, I teach and I work with our agency team to do for our clients is injecting the personality of the client into the message. And remember, these don't have to be formal messages, right? We want to create copy that it's, uh, I always say, best advice when copywriting, imagine you're sitting at the bar with a friend and they ask you, what do you do? Market your service to me. How would you explain it to your best friend? Right. right. Use that language because that injects your personality. And then when the prospect is reading and exposed to the messages, they're not exposed to your personality. And that's true relationship building. And that is what's going to push the needle in lead generation and sales. Right. I've, yeah, it's, that's, that's, that's great that you said that. It's, it's about the other person, landing on the other person so that they are enticed to know more about, you know, what, what is your offering, you know, even if they don't need it. I think that has been the secret for many brands out there, uh, larger brands, is they appeal to your humanity. They appeal to a basic need. Uh, you know, how are you going to satisfy it? There's so many services and products and things out there. Uh, they might all be targeting the same need, but how you present that so that it's amicable, so that it looks like it's not complex. God knows that it looks too expensive. People are not going to click on it. So <laughs> we need to start, you know, with the end in mind. You want to provide a product, provide a service that will, you know, make the person happier, easier, you know. And again, um, you know, there's a, a lot of people, sometimes they say, well, there's a lot of competition out there, people selling the same stuff. And I'm going, well, it could be the same service with how you present it to the other person. If you really care about your client and your customer, and that's the way you come across, absolutely, people are going to work with you. Like, you know, sometimes when somebody says to me, well, I want to connect with you, and I'm going, what for? You know, I need a note here <laughs> or something. What do you want right. to connect? Because, you know, it's like, I don't know them from it. I mean, you know, I don't. And so I think, you know, for all of us out there and for our um, uh, clients are, are looking at these videos. It doesn't matter if you're in a small business, medium or large size business, and, and you're, you know, the trust that the clients have on you, um, on your products, it's all the same. It's all one package. You know, it's, it's all about trust and it's all about, you know, you're there for me because you care about me. And that's, I think, the key, the key, the key, the key for any sale that you want to do is warming it up. Uh, and, and, and 100%. Um, I hear it. I hear it a lot, actually, not only from our training program members, but from our full service agency members that when our, our clients are worked through the process that we've developed, we always position that first call as a networking slash discovery call is, you know, I can't sell you anything because I don't know you. Let's get to know each other first. Right. Mm -hmm. So many stories. I get told about how one, when the prospect shows up to the phone call, they're acting and talking to our client like they've been best friends for, for years. Not only that, at the end of the call, they have the prospect asking them, so what, what, is it do, what is it you do? And again, it goes back to 
this whether again small business owner medium large corporation is you don't know what you don't know and you don't know you have a pain unless someone helps you really identify that pain right and that is what this relationship first and value-based process allows you to do is that it builds that relationship so they are enticed to learn more because people now do business with those that they have a relationship with that like know and trust but also that thought leadership that resource all of those variables now play into that decision yeah no, absolutely well, Tom, thank you very much for spending this time with us. I want to be respectful of your time. I know you're super busy. Um, and, and these are times in which your company, you know, could be play such a critical role for a lot of companies out there. So thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for helping me. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. And again, thank you for the invite. More than honored and privileged to be a part of this. Um, and yeah, it's uh, our, our company's been doing well, but like I said, it's because of what people really need to be successful now. Um, and it's it's just it's tried and true sustainable methodologies that are able to scale with that multi channel approach. Right. Excellent. All right. We'll keep at it. <laughs> well, thank you, Marilena. You as well. And I'm sure that you and I will connect very soon too. Oh, I'm sure. I need your right. life. <laughs> of course. Uh, thank you again for having me. It's been a pleasure. More than happy to do this. Oh, thank you.